Hey folks, it's Charles. Welcome to Can I Beat Super Mario RPG, but I can only use Mario. Let's get to the rules, shall we? The rules are pretty simple. Mario can attack, buff, and use items. All other characters must defend, and can use items only if necessary, and there's no cheating or exploits. And with that said, let's get started. And we start off this run in Bowser's Keep. And it's pretty easy right now, because we only have Mario. However, it is best in this circumstance to go for the jump special as much as possible. Because it gains damage over time, which we'll need later. And now, with the Star Road shattered, we can get to the actual beginning of the run. After being sent out of the castle at Mock Jesus, we make our way to Mario's pad, where Toad insists on trying to give me tutorials which I do not need. And now on to the first boss of the run, the Hammer Brothers. I land a jump on the first one doing a lot of damage and I perfectly dodge a hammer time. I go for a punch and finish off the first Hammer Brother while the other one goes for a Valor up. I jump on the other one doing less damage but I'm increasing my damage over time so it will help. I really suck at dodging at this point, but I get better over time as I haven't played this game in ages. I continue hitting and getting hit until I finally take out the other Hammer Brother. I've built up a decent bit of rust, but this game is meant for children. After beating the Hammer Brothers, I get a Flower Jar which is important for getting more jump attacks later, and I level up HP. I also get the first weapon for Mario, the Hammer. And a little bit further in, we meet up with our Miracle Whip friend, Mallow, who I'm so sad I can't use. I love Mallow so much. Ugh, this sucks. After going to the item shop, I pick up some items I need for Mario, including a shirt which will increase his defense and magic defense. I also pick up a secret Coca-Cola here, which will most likely be sold for 200 coins. And now on to Krakow, where I finally get to shed off a little bit of that rust. I defend with Malo and perfect guard the first attack. I jump doing 30 damage, and I defend with Malo again. I perfect guard a bomb, and I jump doing 45 damage because I timed it correctly. I perfect guard another bomb, and I go for another jump. I defend with Malo again, and it's just going to be a whole lot of this, and Krakow isn't the main boss, so I'm just going to move ahead a little bit. After this, Malo becomes a bigger fish and mugs a mugger. He gets his frog coin back, which is sadly not going to be that useful if I do the whole quest, I'll just keep it for later. Now we move on to fighting Clay Morton, or his original name, Mac. I jump with Mario doing 66 damage, and I block with Malo, and the blocking most if not all attacks from the bodyguards, and he does a flame which he misses. I jump doing 67 damage, and I defend with Malo again dodging most if not all attacks from the bodyguards, again. There's a flame wall which he misses, and I jump doing 56 damage because I missed the timing. I perfect dodge a hot shot and another attack, and he jumps up on his own, which now I have to take out the bodyguards. I swiftly deal with the hooligans, until Clay Morton jumps back down, where I jump and hit him for 72 damage, finishing him off. And with that, we have the first star of seven. And next, we go to Caro Caro Sewers and deal with the monstrosity known as Balome. Now that we're down in Caro Caro Sewers, I get myself to this Hawat, which contains a badge that I very much need. Luckily, it's weak to jump, so I can take it out in three hits. And with the Hawat taken out, we got a flower jar, and the true form pin, which is going to be very useful against Balone. And speak of the devil, we're here. I jump and do 76 damage while I defend with Malo. He attacks Malo, and I jump and do another 51 damage because I missed the timing. I do another jump and do 65 damage and I defend with Malo. He eats Malo, which is perfect as I didn't want him to eat Mario, and I jump and do another 65 damage. He tries to turn me into a Scarecrow, even though I have the true form pin, which makes me immune. I defend, and he turns Mallow into a Scarecrow while I jump again during 70 damage. 
I defend with Malo, and he turns Malo into a Scarecrow again, and I jump for 85 damage. I block an attack, I jump, and do 72 damage, beating Balone. God, that was a mouthful. Alright, Curtis, add the, uh, add the ghost music from, like, the ghost merry-go-round here from Mario 64. I feel like that would be funny. And now we gain access to Geno. And, well, I wouldn't really say gain access to, as we can't really use them. But it's still fun to have them. Geno and Mallow are such amazing characters. It's a shame they're not in anything else. And now we're on to Bowyer. A fight where there's an exception to the rules, which I'll mention later. I defend with Gino, jump with Mario, and I defend with Malo, and then he goes on a spiel about how it's unfair we're going three against one. So, he disables my toad assist, and he has the ability to negate my buttons if he attacks them. Which will suck if he negates X or Y when I need them most. However, that's not too bad, as, you know, I have plenty of FP due to flower jars. And I can just attack normally, but that won't be preferred. And now, on to the exception. There is a mandatory triple move that I must do here. So, I technically started it with Mario, so I guess it's fine, but I'm technically using all three. However, I'm not really counting it toward the rules, as it's mandatory, and I can't do anything about it. And with that, Bowyer's down, and we get the second star. Now we move on to Moleville, where I will fight Punchinello and get some items which I need for later. Now in Mole Town, I finally gain access to the best equipable item for me right now, being the Work Pants. Which is really good if I'm doing a glass cannon build, which I'm currently doing. So I put it on Mario. And now I just gotta hope I don't get hit, which is why I've been boosting HP this entire time with my level ups. Nothing else of note really happened, so let's go to Mr. Punchinello himself. And man, he made me have a short fuse. He's immune to jump attacks, so I can't really jump on him and do damage, so my damage output is already lowered. So I had to use regular attacks, which wasn't doing as much as I hoped. So I had to get used to perfect blocking his bombs, or else I'd get bum-rushed and blown up by kamikaze bombs. Luckily, Mario's attack, if timed properly, does shockwave damage, helping with the bomb problem. However, I did have to get used to the timings, or else Mario would just get completely atomized and turned to ash by these bombs. After he gets crushed by his own bomb, we get the third star. After the gang practically gets turned to ash once again. How do they survive this, I don't know. But with that, we move on to Booster Pass, where we gain access to both Bowser, and after completion, we get Peach. And now, we're at Booster Tower, where we meet up with Jack Black. <laughs> Man, it would be funny as hell if Jack Black actually voiced Bowser in a video game rather than just the movie. That would be funny. Please tell me that's not just me. And now we move on to a fight that gave me a decent bit of trouble that I really didn't like. Knife Guy and Great Guy. Let's get right into it. Knife Guy goes for the attack on Bowser, going for 8 damage. And I special and jump for 192 damage on Knife Guy. I get echoed, so I cannot use specials, which sucks, so I go for a regular attack, hitting him for 142, shockwaving a little bit of damage into Great Guy. They then stack on top of each other, which proves to be quite the challenge. I go for 102 damage with a regular attack and get hit with a Meteor Blast, which almost kills me. The Crystal's Geno, which I block, and I mid-mushroom Mario, healing him up to full. I then block with Bowser and get hit by another Meteor Beam, and I dodge a Crystal, and I jump for 192 damage, and then I get Meteor Blasted again, meaning I have to heal. I dodge with the Crystal, and I heal Mario to full. I then get hit with another Meteor Blast, taking out Geno, so I switch to Mallow and defend. I get hit with a Blizzard, doing only 7 damage, so I jump, doing 205 damage, and in turn, taking out Knife Guy, leaving me with only Great Guy. Great Guy hits Mallow with an Echo Finder, making it so he can't use specials, which is fine, so I jump with 148 damage. Does the same thing to Bowser, so I do another jump, 
hitting for 100 damage. I dodge again, getting hit with a bubble. Now I'm asleep, which sucks, and I get hit for 4 damage. And then I defend with the 2 again. He puts Bowser to sleep, and I defend with Malo. I defend with Malo again, and I can't jump, so I do a regular attack with Mario. They then put Bowser to sleep again, so I then attack Great Guy again. I defend with Malo, and then Bowser gets hit with an Echo Finder, which he has a resistance to. I then hit Great Guy again, and then defend. Then I defend one of Great Guy's attacks, and then I hit him for 180-something damage, taking out Great Guy. And with that, we move on to the cake. Holy shit, that was a lot to speak about. Whew. And now on to the cake. A fight that was not a piece of cake, I tell you that much. Now we gotta deal with the apprentices and just continue jumping on the bunt. The bunt cake. Which has a weakness to jump. Which is perfect. However, the second phase is gonna get a little bit troublesome, which I'll mention later. We just gotta continue jumping and dodging attacks from Torte and the apprentice. And keep jumping on the cake until the apprentice pesters Torte about it moving. And then we have to continue attacking until it happens again. Let's just move on to phase two. Now, you may see that I'm attacking with Bowser here. That's because phase two requires you to attack with multiple people until all the candles are out. That's the thing I mentioned earlier that was troublesome, but it's inevitable so I can't really do anything about it, so the run is still valid in my opinion. We'll just have to ignore this for now. And with a couple more jumps, we take out the cake, and we get access to Princess Peach after going back to the castle. And after not getting a star from the last fight, we make our way through the Star Hill until we get the next star, which is the easiest star by far to pick up. Because it's just laying on the ground. And with that, we move on to the town on the water. And we get access to the boat. So we can get the next star and talk to Fishman. Yeah, Fishman. And now it's time to fight the squid before Johnny. And boy, this fight took a long time because I had to deal with the fear. The fear status effect that gets inflicted regardless of if you have the safety pin or the safety badge or anything that can negate it. It makes you do less damage, so the tentacles that would normally take two hits took about like three or four. But after a good few attempts, the fight went pretty swimmingly. Mario's attacks would do a lot more damage due to jump. He would get feared less often. And the last section alone took me a good few attempts. Too bad I couldn't save state if it were a SNES game, but, you know, I'm playing the remake, so that's fine. But after that, let's move on to getting the safety badge, so I have a little bit of extra protection. And now it's time to fight the wa oh who is also very weak to jump. However, it spawns these little mini Goombas, so I gotta deal with the wa oh first, which takes two hits, and then I can take care of the little tiny mini Goombas. After perfect dodging all the attacks, I can take out each one, one by one. Look at that chain, 17 chain, 18 chain, man I'm good. After finishing off these little Goombas, I gain access to the safety badge and I make my way to go fight Johnny. Who is actually not a pain in the ass this time, because usually he is for me. I dodge a pierce and get hit with a pierce again, taking a lot of damage. So I heal up and focus on dodging this time. He gets Mallow, which is perfect. And I dodge most of the attacks so I can actually focus on going for my main strategy, which is using a Bracer to take half damage. Assume from this point forward that every battle I will be using a Bracer and or an Energizer. I immediately jump and attack one of the lackeys, doing 241 damage, and I defend with both Peach and Mallow. I perfect guard two attacks and then I go for another jump, taking out another one of the lackeys. I defend with both, and they all attack everyone but Mario, which is perfect. I jump, and now I take out the second to last bandana guy, so now I only have two people attacking me, but I leave them both alive. I do 199 to Johnny, and I focus on dodging most attacks. I mid-mushroom myself just in case I get hit with a stray attack and I dodge both attacks, taking less damage from the first one and a full guard on the other. I do 199 to Johnny the second time, and I finish off the fight 
in turn getting the next star. Which is short-lived because I now have to fight Spiritovich. Which I really don't like that they changed his name, I wish they kept it as Yuridovich. Yuridovich sounds so much cooler. You know what? Screw it. I'm still gonna call him Yuridovich. Either way, we start things off with a Bracer so I don't absolutely get smoked by any move that comes my way. I defend with Peach and then I get hit with a Water Blast doing 36 damage, which would have been 72 if I didn't use the Bracer. I jump doing 178 and then I get hit with a Flamestone for 9 damage. I heal to full with a Mid Mushroom and then I defend with Peach. Mallow almost dies to Will-O-Wisp and then he defends. I jump doing 165 damage and then he uses his Mirage Attack. And if you don't know his Mirage Attack, whoever you're hovering over when you first attack is the real Yuridovich, so attack him first. I defend with Peach and I defend with Mallow, and Mallow gets a perfect guard. I jump on the other Spiritovich doing 166 damage, and I defend again with both. Mallow dies, I jump on the other one doing 168 damage, and I defend and they recombine. They do a Water Blast, missing both, and I switch into Bowser. I jump doing 166, and then he does a Water Blast again, hitting me for 38. I know I can survive, so I do another jump doing 168 and I get hit with a Flamestone. I jump again, doing 169, and I switch Mallow back in for some odd reason. He misses another water attack, and then I jump and do 114, and then he splits into another Mirage attack. I then switch back in Geno for some reason, I defend with both, and I jump. Taking out Yuridovich. Boss rush time, baby! Time to do the Bloom refight, and it's pretty simple. Pretty much exactly the same as the Bloom fight before, but now we can make clones. I do the fight as normal, I jump, do 249 damage, and he turns Bowser into a clone. Which is fine, as long as he doesn't turn Mario into a clone, because Mario's clone is immune to jump. I defend with both, and Mario jumps on Bloom, doing 249 damage, while the Bowser hits my Bowser and misses. Mario jumps again, doing 249, Mario gets hit for 32 from the Bowser, and then gets turned into a clone himself, which sucks. So now I just gotta bum rush Balloon without dealing with the clones. Mario heals, and then Bowser gets hit for 13 damage, and Gino gets hit for 51. Balloon misses an attack, and Mario hits for 155. Bowser gets hit by both attacks, and they get all hit by a light bubble, which misses Mario. Mario jumps, and does 249, ending the fight. Oh boy, let's move on to another boss. And that boss is Smilax. We start things off with a Bracer like always, and then I defend with both. I can't use a special, so I use a Royal Syrup just to heal up fully. Then, I go for a jump, taking out the first head, doing 234 damage. The Bezo flies in and heals Smilax, now he has two heads. No matter, I can just do the same thing, jump on both heads individually. You jump on the first head, doing 234, and then jump on the other one, doing 234. Then we move on to the three-headed section of Smilax. Which I'm just going to cut ahead, it's the same thing, just jump three times individually on each head, doing 234. Now we move on to the actual big head Smilax. And regardless of how intimidating this fight seems, it's pretty much the exact same, just jump until you win. Smilax pretty much can't do anything, so I'm just gonna cut right on ahead to when we get to Nimbus Land. And once we do get to Nimbus Land, Mario gets a sweet new paint job, we get snuck into the castle, and we fight Birdo, which I got the Ghost Badge from Monstro Town, which helps a lot here. It has all numerical damage, and Birdo does no elemental damage or statuses, so it is by far the best choice here if you are having trouble. And now we're on to Dodo, which is pretty much the exact same thing as most other fights, just defend with both and jump with Mario. However, Dodo does an absurd amount of damage, so you gotta be real careful about not to die here. It can really, really, really suck the reset here. And with that, we move on to Valentina, which has another slight caveat that messes with the rules. Bowser gets taken away by Dodo, and you have to fight with him. So, to not technically fight with him, I use a Firebomb, doing 240 damage, and I got a freebie. He Flutter Hushes me, which is fine, I just use another one of the Firebombs, and it moves right on to the next phase. 
Valentina starts off with a Water Blast, almost taking out Gino and doing a lot of damage to Mario. So I defend with Gino and use a Bracer on Mario to help mitigate the damage he's going to take. When Dodo comes back, Bowser comes along too, and now it's finally a fair fight. I defend with Bowser, and I get hit with a Pain Spout, taking out Peach and doing a lot of damage to both. I mid-mushroom Mario to heal him to full, and I defend with Bowser. The Flutter Hush is resisted, and Bowser gets hit. So I jump on Valentina, doing 293 damage. I defend with Bowser, and I get hit with a Multi-Strike and a Pain Spout, taking out Mario to 52 HP. I heal him to almost full with a mid-mushroom, and then I get hit with a mid-strike, taking out Bowser. I jump on Valentina doing 352 damage, and then I switch to Malo. Dota misses a Flutter Hush and Mario gets hit for 29 damage, then he jumps for 352. Then they get hit with a Solidify for 12, and then they jump again, taking out Valentina, ending the fight. And now we move on to the Sar Dragon. Now this fight took me a lot of attempts, so I'm just going to show off my best attempt, and how I won, and some like neat little things that happened during it. So I got a little bit cocky on this attempt, so I decided to go without a Bracer on the first hit. So I jump, doing 151 damage to the Sar Dragon. I defend with both, get hit with a Flame Wall, and then I Pussy out and decide to go for the Bracer. Then I defend with both and get hit with a Water Blast. That's all fine and dandy, until the second phase where I almost died to a boulder and barely scraped by it with a miss. I healed full, got hit with a perfect, and then I jumped for 534 on weakness, get a perfect again, and then hit for 543 again, ending the fight and getting the Star of Red. The Red Star. The Red, Red Star. The fifth one? I think that's what it is. And then I get it yoinked by the Axum Rangers. And oh boy, this fight was a pain in the ass, because your boy forgot to pick up Ice Bombs. So I gotta just use my Bracer and attempt to dodge these attacks. I get a couple perfect guards, and yellow does a shit ton of damage to Malo. Pink goes for the recover, and green goes for the static. After dodging some more attacks and taking a shit ton of damage, I decide I need to do more damage myself to compensate. So I use an Energizer, the last Energizer I have, so I'm gonna have to buy some more. I ultimately decide that the best course of action is to go for green, because green statuses can be a little annoying. So I do 258 damage on a jump, and I take way too much damage than I would have liked. And I'm way too close to death. So I decide that my best option is to use my Hail Mary. The Hail Mary I was gonna use against Smithy, just in case shit got dicey. I use a Red Essence, which makes me completely invulnerable to damage for 3 turns. Enough turns to do a shit ton of damage to a lot of the Axum Rangers, making this fight much easier. And yes, I made sure to keep Mario in health range so he would not get one shot by the Breaker Beam. And with that, the Axum Rangers are down, and let's move on to Boomer. Okay, Boomer, let's see what you got. I start things off with a jump, doing 248 damage, and then I realize. I should have been using Bracers and Energizers for this, just in case. So I Bracer with Mario, and then I defend with both. He misses a Blast, and then I defend with both. Mario uses an Energizer just to get some little bit of extra damage in there, because I know he has a blue phase that has extra defense to specials. Although, the 319 damage I'm doing is pretty damn good, so it doesn't really matter, so I can just keep using specials regardless of what phase he's in. And with enough relentless attacking, we take down Boomer, and we move on to Exor, which is our last step before moving on to Weapon World. As usual, I start things off with a Bracer, just to make sure I don't get absolutely decimated, and then I defend with both Mallow and Peach. All the attacks kind of lay into Mallow, which is perfect here, so I decide to get a free Energizer off. Then I defend with both Mallow and Peach again, all the attacks kind of lay into Peach this time, and then I perfectly dodge a Dark Star. I then decide to go for a Fire Bomb to do a shit ton of AoE damage to all the parts, and the eyes are weak to fire. So since the protection is gone, I can now start doing damage to the main body. And with that, we move on to Weapon World.
and now that we're in Weapon World, we can start off the gauntlet of bosses that start in this area with the clock. And the clock is pretty basic. It's just a three different attacks, same enemy sort of deal. Now, a lot of the attacks, I know the dodge patterns pretty, pretty well. So I start things off with an energizer rather than a bracer, so I can focus more on damage than defending. Although it's going to take much more than this clock to stop me, even though it left me at 9 HP. I've been at this game for hours and hours and hours. Let's move on to the Eridovich refight. And with this refight, there's not really much to talk about. I farmed this over and over and over again to level up for Smithy, so I'm just going to use this time to apologize for how long this video took to get out. It uh, took way too long. I had to revoice it twice because I fucked it up the first time. And we also took way too long editing and way too long actually recording the footage. That's an oopsie on our part. And uh, let us know if you like this new style of content. And if you do enjoy our content, and you're new, be sure to like and subscribe. It'll mean a lot. With that out of the way, we deal with Cloaker and Domino. Cloaker's the easiest one to deal with first, because his attacks are melee based, while Domino's attacks are magic based, which we have the safety badge so the elemental damage won't do as much. So we deal with Cloaker first. With this strategy in mind, I start things off with a Bracer to mitigate the damage that Cloaker will do to me. And then I just go as usual, attack and dodge. Basically it. I'm running out of time in this video, so I'm just going to speed things up a bit. Domino, pretty much the same thing. However, with my safety badge, the elemental damage is being lowered. Along with that, any statuses that come in contact with me don't do anything. So the domino fight was pretty damn easy. So let's move on to the management trio, which is just going to be a quick little boss rush. First off was the first yellow man, I forgot what he's called, the clerk. There we go, he's down. Then he's down. And then Big Red. Takes a little bit of extra time, but he goes down smoothly. And now on to the factory chief. And the big goddamn tank. Now I can make this fight pretty free using a sleep bomb, so let's just do that. Win and move on to Smithy. Now we're on to Smithy, the big bad that made this video so late. He single-handedly made this video take so much longer to make, cause each attempt took like 20 minutes and that's not even including phase 2, I'm not even joking. And believe me, I would love to go in grave detail about this fight and say each individual attack, but I can't, because this fight took like 30 minutes, and this video is already 32 minutes long. So I'm just going to have to explain some things that went down. Smithy has an absurd amount of health, so that was a pain in the ass. He would spawn into shy guy things, and they would sword rain and combo sword rains into wiping me entirely. I had to level up for hours just to make sure I was able to do it. I didn't over level, mind you, but I leveled up a decent bit. And with all that, I was debating even finishing this video, to be completely honest. But I made the post, I knew it had to be done, so I did it. So I hope this... I hope this is okay. <laughs> and with all that, I move on to phase two. The main reason why this fight took me so long was because of Smithy's changing heads. The two ones to note are the tank and the magician. The magician does absurd magic damage that I couldn't really deal with, and the tank would one-shot Mario if I wasn't careful. So I had to make sure I had to perfect block pretty much everything. In no way did I think this challenge was going to be this difficult coming to the end like this. I thought it was going to be happy fun time Mario, but no. This last section was so goddamn brutal. I popped off so hard when I beat it, Curtis was concerned by how loud I was. The challenge may have been tedious at the very end, but I wouldn't change a thing. I'm proud of how I had to overcome this, and I really enjoyed the experience. So, with that final hit, that's it. That was Super Mario RPG with only Mario.
be sure to like and subscribe and comment down below if you want to see more from us. And we'll make sure to heart every single comment we can. And remember, let the games begin and let the challenges be tedious. Goodbye, folks.